Imagine an alternative history of the 1976 presidential election. America is celebrating its bicentennial with fireworks, and two men, a Republican from Michigan and a Democrat from Georgia, are campaigning to be president. What if one of them had given a speech that predicted the future? My fellow Americans, one could imagine him saying, this difficult decade will soon come to an end. The national hangover from Vietnam and Watergate will slowly fade. There will be no more lines for gasoline, no more stagflation. In fact, the Berlin Wall will crumble in our lifetimes. The Cold War will end. The nuclear threat will recede, and there will be no more foreign military threats to our soil. The last of the formal legal barriers to full economic participation by women and people of color will fall. China, Korea, Brazil, India, and South Africa will join the global economic community and lift hundreds of millions of people out of life-threatening poverty. Americans will invent or reinvent industries that will create more wealth in the next 30 years than has been created in the entire history of humankind. Technology will dramatically improve the lives of all Americans and most people around the globe. And America will continue to be the world's wealthiest nation with its most productive workers. Now, that would have been a true, incredible, truly astounding set of predictions, all of which, as it turns out, would have come true. But imagine if the speech continued my fellow Americans, of all the new wealth our country produces, 95% will go to the top 1% of income earners. A few hundred wealthy families will amass more wealth than the bottom 50% of us combined. The bottom 80 to 90% won't see a dime of increased pay, and the bottom 50% will have to take a pay cut. We're going to export manufacturing, import third world wages, divest from our infrastructure, detax, deregulate, globalize, privatize. We're going to break the unions, bankrupt our pension system, shred the funding for rur rural and urban public education, make debt-free debt -free college a thing of the past. We're going to turn our backs on the middle class. We're going to replace old Jim Crow laws with a new economic apartheid for black and brown Americans. The net economic impact of women doubling their workforce participation between 1977 and 2012 will be zero dollars in take-home pay for the bottom 90 percent of income earning families. And the family that can reasonably afford a comfortable middle class life on a single person's paycheck today will need two or even three incomes to live the same life a generation from now. Obviously, giving such a speech would have doomed anyone's presidential candidates. His party probably would have been out of power for years. No one in America would have voted for such a vision. And yet, just like the optimistic first part, the second part of our fictional presidential speech would also turn out to be true. And it became true not because of some historical accident, but because our economic system was intentionally rigged in favor of large corporations and wealthy Americans over everyone else. Trickle-down economics was woven into the national conversation or consciousness as if it were written into the founding documents of our country. 200 years of struggle and progress had been intentionally reversed over the course of the last 40 years. If a foreign power had announced that was its plan for America, we would have gone to war. 